guess what I got in here? You got it, a tri-tip. You know what we're doing today? Santa Maria style barbecue, baby. But first off, we're going up to Brea, California. We're gonna meet Dan. Dan is gonna show us how to pick just the right steak for your barbecue. Then we're coming back here. I've got the spices all set up. We're gonna make some Santa Maria dry rub. Next up, best of the West charcoal. Natural lump charcoal is what we're cooking on today. And by the end of this video, believe me, you're gonna be ready to eat. Just don't waste any more time, let's go. Now before we get that Santa Maria style barbecue going, you gotta be sure to get a good quality piece of meat. We came down here to the Meat House in Brea, California. We're gonna go in and talk to an expert about how you can get the most out of a great tri-tip barbecue. Here at the Meat House, they've got a great selection of meats, deli products, and wine. Today, Dan's gonna help us pick out a piece of tri-tip. Dan? A couple things you wanna look at when, when purchasing a tri-tip. It's first of all, the location. Uh, you wanna know where your product's coming from and what grade it is. Your meats start as a prime, choice, and then select. Prime being the best. We offer here a, uh, a top choice product, as well as some prime uh, products. One thing you wanna know about looking at is when it's prime or top choice is the marbling. A lot of times you'll be able to notice the marbling right in the crease of the tri-tip and what that does is it actually adds a little more a juice and a little more flavor into it once it's being cooked. A couple other things you want to look at is the amount of fat and silver skin on your tri-tip. This right here is a completely trim tri-tip versus one that has your silver skin and a little more of your fat on it. Uh, when you buy your, your tri-tip at, at a normal grocery store you're going to have more of the fat and silver skin on it as well as a huge piece of fat cap on the back. That fat cap does come off fairly easy, but you want to make sure that you, uh, you ask them to take that off, or if you buy it at a local butcher like ourselves, you can always ask us to take care of that. And then the third thing, and probably one of the more important, is the equalness of the, of the length of the tri-tip. You want to make sure it's pretty flat all the way from butt end to the tip. Um, what that'll do is that presents you with an easier cooking, cooking method. You don't really end up with a more rare product and more, more of a well-done product. Um, a lot of them will be higher in the back end. That's what I'm talking about. You don't really want to have that highness in the back end. You want it to be nice and flat all the way through. I can show you how to take off the silver skin if you do get some um, on your tri-tip from the store. A lot of times you can get under there with your finger and peel most of it off. If not, just kind of go over it with your knife, peeling it off, gently holding onto a piece, and then just taking it off just like that. I can't wait to get this nice piece of meat over to the barbecue. Let's go. So Danny did a great job picking us out some meat. And here's the tri-tip that he selected for us. This, on the other hand, is the tri-tip I picked up at the market just a few minutes ago. You can really see the difference here. You can see that this one comes untrimmed. That means it has this big piece of fat cap on it. Some people like it with the entire fat cap on it. Some people like to trim most of it off. Start to trim that fat off the top. And as you get deeper into it, just like Danny said, you want to go ahead and take, make sure that you can get all that silver skin off of it. So the perfect thing you're gonna need for your Santa Maria style barbecue is gonna be some dry rub. So here's the spices you're gonna need. First, five teaspoons of sea salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, two teaspoons of white pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon to a full teaspoon of parsley, and three teaspoons of granulated garlic. Let's mix it all up together. Look, I get it, not everybody's gonna wanna make their own dry rub, but this is what I recommend. Suzy Q seasoning or Jocko's mix. If you go to our website, we'll have the links for you. Look, I gotta be honest with you, if you're making a real Santa Maria style barbecue, you're using this, red oak wood from the Central Coast. Unfortunately, most of you don't have this available, so it's not gonna quite be the same. So this is what I picked instead. Best of the West Natural Oak Lump Charcoal. This is a great product, we use it all the time. It comes in nice big chunks for you. What's great about it is it's all natural, won't leave any chemical taste on your food. And the second thing I really like about it is it seems to cook a lot hotter, a lot longer, and it's really easy to clean up. So let's load some up in our chimney here. Let's light it up. So I'm ready to dump our burning coals out. Just 
spread it out a little bit. Now we're gonna add some more charcoal to it because we're gonna need more fire than that to cook two big steaks. Now you can hear it crackling. What that crackling is, is that's little tiny air bubbles inside of the charcoal. Don't be alarmed about it. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, we got our fire started. Let's take this time to go ahead and spice up the meat. We made our great spice here, just sprinkle it on top. Be liberal about it, kind of rub it in. Don't worry, some of it's gonna burn off. I like to rub it in real good. Get it on in there. Make sure that your piece of meat is thoroughly coated. There we go, we got it coated all over, nice and good. We're gonna have a good tri-tip as soon as that fire is ready. Okay, our coals have burned down pretty good. All I wanna do now is spread them out a little bit because we're gonna to wanna to have a nice even heat around for our steaks. Let's throw our steaks on. I'm putting them with the majority of the fat on the top. Try to cut down on the number of flare-ups that we have and let that nice, nice fat juice soak into the meat. So I'm gonna drop the meat down low to the heat, that way we can sear in the juices. Okay, time to turn this puppy. Again, we're just trying to sear in the juices a little bit. We got a nice color going on it. We got a little flame underneath it. I'm okay with that. Look at that guy. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Again, we're gonna let it cook nice and close to the heat. Again, we're just searing in the sides. We're gonna lift up the grill after a little bit and let it slow cook. You can see here, the meat is already starting to plump up a little bit. And that's real good. That shows us we got good cooking temperature going on there. Look at the color of the side there. That's looking really good. All right, that natural smoke's doing a great job on the steaks here. Let's give them a flip. Oh yeah, look at that. That is perfect. So we got both sides seared in. I'm gonna raise up the grill some. Now we're gonna slow cook it. We're gonna give it about uh, maybe 20 minutes or so like this. And then I think we'll be uh, there. We, we might turn it once or twice. Don't be scared, don't be scared of the meat. So the big question always is, how do you know when your tri-tip's done? Well, just like any cooking, time and experience is the best way to know. One way is just kind of push down on top of the meat with your fork. Juice is coming out. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, nice and juicy. It's starting to firm up. This guy's getting real firm. The other way, of course, is to stick a meat thermometer in there. Let's see how we're doing. We're shooting for about 128 on the center. And then, of course, the third way is to give it a cut and take a look at it. Some people will tell you, oh, no. Look at that, that's all red in there. That thing isn't even close. So what we're going for here is a center temperature of about 128. That'll make it go up around medium rare. So we've done pretty good here. We're able to reach our temperature level up here in the uh, high 120s. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull both pieces of meat off. So we've got our meat resting inside of that container. We're gonna give it about, I don't know, maybe five or 10 minutes. We're gonna let it get up to temperature. We've given our steaks a chance to rest. So let's go ahead and pull them out now and let's give them a slice. Now what we're gonna do is called a cross cut. As you can see by the close up here, the grain of the meat kind of goes this direction. So we're gonna cut across this way. It'll make it a little, little easier to cut and a little more appetizing. How are we doing? Oh baby, look at that. There's a couple of philosophies on cutting tri-tip. Most people make it about maybe half inch or so. Some people like it a lot more thin. If you're making sandwiches, you wanna make it nice and thin. Those are two great looking tri-tips. Ding dong. What a great day we had today. We went up to the butcher shop. Danny picked us out a great piece of meat. Then we made our own Santa Maria dry rub. Came out perfect. We then cooked our meat on top of the best of the West natural oak lump charcoal. And it came out perfect. Look at that, it's so tasty. I'm gonna have a little bite. Mmm. Oh, that's good. And to top it off, we have some wine from the Cambria Vineyards in the Santa Maria Valley. It's a Pinot Noir. What a great way to end the day. We'll see you next time here at Vesta Vineyard. And we'll see you next time with Best of the West Wood Products.